So now is a series of uh, shots showing how the Terrace of the was, was built. <clears throat> First of all, we laid a string line of a 36 inch grid, horizontal grid. It was called level zero, and that was slab line. We laid that out and then chalked it out with line. And, uh, <clears throat> and for the first time, we were able to see the real scale of that little model that we built. And of course, we were all blown away. And so, uh, pushed a little bit further. We uh, had the footage done. They're uh, 36 inch deep footage, which makes a, uh, we call it a floating slab because uh, the ground is very unstable and some, uh, we call it gumbo, moves around. And then, and then after the slab was done, then it was time to bend all those contours. So the shape of the ferrocement shell is defined by arcs that were drawn on the slab. We uh, outlined the contours on the slab as a pattern and then bent the uh, rebars, no, not rebars, it was the uh, uh, black pipe in conformance. With the, uh, with the contour lines. And uh, so we had all these pipes bent, pile of pipes. They're all numbered, labeled where they go. And then we started erecting them, starting from uh, the north side of the lake. And every three feet, we would erect another contour held up by two by four short. Then, when all of those are erected, then we bent the horizontal rebar. We already had them defined. So it was able, we were able to put the patterns out on the uh, on the slab, bend the contours, weld them in place, and then that created the shape of the shell. And this technology we got from boat building. I mean, this, the surface of the of the, sh the shell is like a boat. It's uh, eight layers of chicken wire, four on each side of, of see, quarter inch rods running every 12 inches. So you have you have a grid of steel rebars like this with four layers of chicken wire on both sides. And as this thing progressed, it was just just to see the reality of it you know, happening before our eyes. It was exhilarating. It wasn't like going to work, it was like every day you just couldn't get just couldn't wait to get back on it. And then we could actually experience the space inside, which was, you know, it's beyond description. It's, it was just incredible. On the arches, where the dome, the two domes on the side meet the tower, is a weak point because it's like where the force is stopped. So we added steel reinforced arches to um, to beef it up with those intersections. And this is the way we did it. We found an old four-inch line. It's, I think it was used to, to fill the tank when you know, during drop time. We pulled it out of the barn and had this funnel laid, and we were able to place the concrete down at the bottom, pull the hose out, and uh, complete that, that structural element. In that antenna structure is uh, a stove pipe for the fireplace, and then one of the a lot of things on top of the antenna. There's some speakers that connect to the intercom down inside. There's lights, there's landing lights, there's you know, whatever we get on there, antennas. And uh, so this is uh, this is welding that place. And that's me welding. It's, uh, I learned how to weld on the skull. It's a good skill to know. I haven't done much of it since, but uh, nevertheless. The other thing that was uh, necessary was have all the windows built. And we found this um, a local steel fabricator that works with the oil companies and the, they have the equipment to build just about anything as long as you communicate it to them what you want it to. Of course, that means explicit drawings that they can follow and produce something that you can use. So the original design of the window panel on the model was a little bit preformed and it was kind of hard to Describe that. I changed the shape of the original uh, window on the on the bottle to one that was purely Euclidean. You can draw it with only a compass and a straight edge. 
at any scale, and it can be it can be communicated, you know, to the fabricator. So uh, <clears throat> this is the design that we use for the front window panels, and it was easy to draw it up, put a scale to it, numbers on it, and uh, and the steel fabricator did a beautiful job that we use window panels to plug in and weld it onto the, uh, the steel armature. So when all of this was put together, the, the windows in place, all of the steel work done, it's like photographs, walking around, and people, guests would come in, and it was a wonderful time because it just seemed more real than ever. And you know, looking back at this, you know, chills me up a little bit. <laughs> then the, the plaster was the next thing. So there's two coats of plaster, and this is. Uh, it's uh, Portland cement plaster which has very little lime in it, but it's, it's strong and you put it on both sides of the um, chicken wire. <laughs> and then travel it over the outside and then travel it on the inside and you wind up with this incredibly hard um, ferro cement shell that doesn't have the same property as the steel reinforced concrete. Um, the steel reinforced concrete beam, for example, you can get tension on the bottom through the, through the rebars, and you can get uh, concrete only in compression. But with ferro cement, they just they bond together to a point where I've read someplace that you could actually theoretically make a ferro cement diving board. So it makes it a little bit flexible, very strong, and uh, very durable. I mean, it's something that will be there for a long time.